thank you for being here at the 2018 BRMI Bioregulatory Medicine Institute Convention in Louisville, Kentucky. <laughs> and uh, got new faces from the one that was in 2017. I um, have a workshop. We have, I think, about one hour. So this is a workshop that I used to teach in two days and still do occasionally. I have um, a three-hour video that is available by going on to floralive.com forward slash pro package, P-R-O package. And that's probably about a 26-page document that has lots of information on different ways of using the Floralive Uncut Flower Essences. So I just want to give a few introductory remarks. Flower essences have been around probably since the dawn of human civilization. They've been used in many ways. Um, they were used a great deal in ancient India. They were used in ancient uh, Egypt. <coughs> And what we have seen in, the, in this current era is uh, the work of Dr. Edward Bach, a physician, Batch, as they say in England, um, physician that, who is a, a mainstream medical practitioner, and then began falling away from that, was also very strong in bacteriology, developed the bowel nosos, came from Dr. Bach. And Dr. Bach was a member of the, I don't know if he was the International Homeopathic League, but he was a very respected homeopath as he came out of you know, mainstream medicine, he eventually saw that when people had bad disposition disorders, um, <clears throat> he realized that you had to take care of the gut microflora. And that's how he developed <clears throat> the homeopathic bowel I think a lot of people don't know that, but it's really, really useful. That was his background. And then he, he had this inner dialogue that said, there must surely be something uh, more pure than using pathogens to create, you know, a joy and, and lightness and, and, and essence, and, you know, lightness in being. And so then he was led into, he sold his practice, he, he retired from that and, and went into full-time production of flower essences for a rather short time. His life was, uh, he died in his early 50s, <clears throat> I think. Something like that. He didn't live too long. And then his uh, paramour and the, the dear woman that he lived with for many years carried on his work until the 1970s. But he, he brought the use of flower essences into really, he was this really amazing being. His, his uh, book, Heal Thyself, every practitioner of, of healthcare should read that book because it's a, it's a manifesto of spiritual orientation in practice. So I read that when I was a student. <coughs> In, uh, in chiropractic college, I guess. And it's just you can't read it without being inspired as to the true sources of illness. When we're here at the bioregulatory medicine place and it has a focus on um, German biological medicine and European biological medicine to a very large extent and then some of the things that are being done in this country, it's a very <clears throat> intellectual, brilliant, um, often uh, molecular biology based approach, but it's also bioenergetic, which is extremely important addition. And I think uh, even today we're seeing, and my opinion is that one third of health, at, well, it's actually more, but represented it's mental, structural, uh, and nutritional. The, you know, that's the triad of health that was developed in applied kinesiology in the 1960s, and it's really a very good triad. To, for all of us to build our knowledge. So depending on your orientation, that mental-emotional frame can be a much larger. It doesn't have to be equilateral. It could be a, a, a very skewed triangle with you know, a huge base being mental-emotional and then the two sides being structural. Structural being either osteopathic or chiropractic, typically where you influence neur uh, the neural area or blood supply. Homeopathy talks more about the influence on microcirculation in blood and chiropractic talks more about neurology, um, the, the neurology of the spine and spinal innervation. But <clears throat> you can't influence one without the other. So you've got to take care of structure, you have to take care of nutrition, and you really need to do the mental-emotional framework. 
So, so we see in this conference this uh, beautiful presentation of all these things that we can do to monitor, physically measure things that are not in balance in the body. How do you measure thought, which is invisible? This is, this is the big problem. So <clears throat> the area of, and I ate the ridiculous, very tasty dessert, <clears throat> at it because I just, just because I did. <laughs> and that's the effects. So um, what was I saying? So we don't want to lose sight of um, this mental emotional part. And the question is, how do we measure it? So the field of energy psychology began, most people don't know this, it was really started from the influence of George Goodhart, who was the founder of applied kinesiology. He and a bunch of people working around him realized this mind-body connection and that you could actually challenge a mental state. You could make a statement <clears throat> and watch how the body responded to that statement. And when you're making the statement, it could be an affirmative statement, you're asking the subconscious mind to show you whether the statement is true or not. So you can, you can render the invisible visible. So one of the, <clears throat> one of the phrases, we're going to test, if, we're going to test, we got, let's see, I'm, let's count up here. One, two, three, five, six, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, 18, 19, 20, 20 21 people. So I want to check all of you. And if you do a really complete assessment, which is, what we point out in this book, The Floral Hand of God. This was published in 2014, and I really encourage everyone that's here to get this. It, I spent about two years writing this book, and I spent one year doing uh, section two, the, the intermediate uh, part two, <clears throat> the intermediary part of this book, part two. And I'm going to read this, this little thing on the back of the cover. Part two presents landmark scientific discoveries relating to the mode of action of flower essences prepared in a powerful new way. It penetrates the mysteries of the spiritual mind, examining leading edge theories in quantum biology and physics to explain how specially selected flower frequencies may install into our brain being spiritual impulses from the heavens to improve our life at a rate faster than light speed. And it is at a rate faster than light speed. So I had these impressions as to what was happening <clears throat> I've had cases where on the table, and we might see it today, and I'm trying to see if, if there's anyone in here that could have that kind of a reaction, and it's hard to tell. But you can sometimes, for those people that are seers, anyone volunteer who sees energy or feels it strongly? Okay, do we have anybody else? It always takes a little courage for these people to raise their hands. Does anybody see it clearly? You see it pretty clearly. So those of you should, I always ask in the, at these seminars, and I did this in, uh, with Japanese uh, people that were brilliant. I did it in uh, the Manila with a whole group of these, three or four of these people that were really advanced seers. And they were standing there, and we were filming it when they were explaining what they were seeing dimensionally. And they, and they weren't making this up. These are just solid people sitting there, and they're just saying, oh, what, that's really interesting. So what was fascinating was for me to, to compare what the people in Japan saw with the people in Manila and the people here in the United States. And they all saw the same thing. So that's called a consensus study, very valid way of building science. They did that in the Stanford Research Institute when they were, when they were trying to evaluate scientifically remote viewing, which, by the way, was all funded by the CIA. So that was done in the 60s and 70s. And we still have a couple of the people that were the designers of that. One, at least, is still living. But it was a, uh, an amazing s study. And it was very scientifically done. And the way that they did that was by independently doing things that n one person didn't know what the other was doing. And then at the end, comparing results and seeing if they all agreed. And that's a very valid scientific <laughs> way of trying to get information about something that you can't normally see. Because I really like science, good science. We pointed out those, hopefully you all heard those quotes about mainstream medical science, and this is from the editors of New England Journal of Medicine and also Lancet, that it's largely unreliable. And that was them. Those are the editors of those most prestigious journals. So we talk about science, we have to expand our mind. 
and <clears throat> really look at what is, how do we document things? And when we're looking at the invisible, how do we document it? So we're going to try and use maybe, maybe a couple of test phrases. This book contains in part three, uh, it's a guide to how to use these things. It, it contains, let's look at one of these. Let's try and find one. Uh, I'm going to look at this. It's on page 247 of this book. It's an amazing, there's a chapter in here, I think it's chapter eight, which was um, all about what happened for the development of one flower. That was the most fun chapter. Those two chapters, I think it's chapter eight and nine. Yes, chapter eight and nine. Eight is Madame Fate and the other one is Encountering Ga Dancing Goddess. So uh, Madame Fate, was a chapter that took place when I went to Jamaica to find a flower that under guidance, because I get guidance. I call my steering committee, but I get guidance. Because people say, well, how did you think of this? And in the introduction of the book, I said I didn't, because you couldn't. You, you, when you see what happens here, there's nobody, it doesn't matter how smart you are, you could never think of this. You have to construct how it's working retrospectively. You have to go look at it and then go, how could that have happened? You have to go backwards to try to postulate. So when I had done that for a few years, and I knew I was going to write the book, uh, Fate and, and, and uh, uh, the fact that I had met this man when I was a kid, 19 years old, uh, I knew about Dr. Tiller, who's probably the most respected physicist in the world, who also is deeply immersed in spiritual essence of, of being. So in fact, I'd say he is the most. And he's, he's really, for those uh, alternative medical uh, conventions throughout the last 20 or 30 years, He's uh, highly recognized in that small group of people. So I got in touch with him. I went out to visit him in Scottsdale, Arizona. And he was so kind to be the science advisor for that part two of the book. So no one, in my, in my opinion, unless it's been currently, but at that time in 2014, there was no exposition of a model that would explain how transformation of consciousness could occur so quickly from a, the standpoint of quantum physics. So I took Dr. Tiller's work, which was r ridiculously complex, and I'm not a physicist, but I had a little basic training in physics and you know college pre-med stuff. But it's very advanced stuff, and I <laughs> went to him and I just said, Dr. Tiller, this I kind of like understand this. Can you help me understand it? So, and he actually does not uh, give accolades to anybody, but he did give me a very understated. I think you did a good job. That that was great from him. That that means a lot. So it means that his work is pretty well explained in part of that part two. And I think it's the best model because it, there's, if you go into quantum physics, there's a lot of argument from a lot of different people. And they're all working on um, theories, and none of which are easily, or, or, or they may not be testable at all, but they're all working on theories depending on very complex math to work out how th this realm down here works at speeds less than, than light speed. And then at some other places in the universe, it has to be going faster than light speed. And um, that was actually Dr. Tiller's main theory. And he figured out how you can explain that mathematically. And anyway, and that's explained in here. So when we say it can produce changes at light speed, that's just not, that's not nonsense. That's probably very true. Now, what's rather interesting from the standpoint of those seers, and I've met, worked with many of them, the last one being in, um, in the Philippines, we, they, they'll stand, and when the, this touches them, they see just explosions of activity in the subtle field. And one of the products, which is in, uh, you all have these little packages. One of them says uh, it's called Healing Support. <clears throat> healing Support contains. If you were only going to use one thing, if you were only going to use three things in practice, it would be healing support. And I forgot to bring the regular bottle of it, but it's a one ounce bottle uh, that is dropper top. It would be healing support and clear and smile. If you wanted to start making a big change in people's lives, you would start with those. It's just easy to use just three products. Healing support contains several flowers from different parts of the world that address the majority of what's going on in suffering humanity. One of them is emotional trauma and abuse. That's blue-eyed grass. 
Another one, when you, when, this is a simple model that is explained very clearly in this book. <laughs> when you have emotional abuse and trauma, you shut down. When you shut down, you fail to receive, and particularly you fail to receive love. When you fail to receive love, every metabolic process in your body uh, is affected. All enzyme systems are energy driven. When you reduce the total amount of energy in your body, all those enzyme systems suffer. So a very physical thing happens when you're not receiving love. So Flor de la Luna, Flor de la Luna, which is from a very sacred place in the high Andes, blue-eyed grass, which grows in the margins of the forest of my Floralive Forest in Tennessee, um, a remarkable flower called Snowball Flower from uh, the Philippines. That was the last flower I discovered in 2015. Uh, 14 or 15? I think 2015 maybe. 14. Jem was with me. We were not married at that time. She was my little helper on that trip. And uh, I met her in Manila. And then we just never left each other after that. So that was kind of neat. But she came with me on that trip, and we discovered uh, that and another flower on one of the large islands in the Philippines. And they're truly remarkable flowers. And then, you know, a couple of others. But you can read about that healing support. So when you get that uh, document that has it has descriptions of each of those products in the floralive.com forward slash pro package. So, so the way that we can test healing support is I'm free from the effects of emotional trauma. Uh, I allow myself to receive love, yes or no. I'm free from the effects of emotional trauma, yes or no. Now for any of the, there's a few people that probably are in here and there's a lot of people that probably are not. But we don't have time to do a, 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 a big study on anybody. It takes about five or 10 minutes per person. We don't have that time. So what we're going to do is <clears throat> do some of the things that are the most dramatic. Is good to check that. So it would be good to start with someone that has done a lot of work to try to, or let's put it this way, has done exhaustive work to clear emotional or physical abuse or trauma. How many people have done exhaustive work to clear emotional abuse or trauma? Okay. So I'm going to, you two would be the people to, to work with to, right away. So we'll just quickly do that. Who, um, who has just not had the amount of love in their life that should be there? All right, then we can, we can do you for that. And who, this is one of my favorite ones. This is chapter eight, Madam Fate. Who just keeps having gnarly stuff happen, which shouldn't? It's just like some damn little thing is interfering in your life all the time. Who's that? Then you come on up, all right? So we're, we're going to start with that. And then hopefully, how many of you know how to do a simple muscle test properly? You know, just a good, uh, like a fair number of you do. The, there's a three-hour training video on the link in that digital document. So if you scroll down a fair ways into it, you'll see a link that goes to YouTube video. It's three hours. And the reason that I did that is for what we're experiencing here. There's a lot of people that need this training. And I finally just said, no, let me do that for online, go around the world, whenever, whoever needs it, they can see it. It's very clear how to do what I'm going to show you here. So you can look at that. It will tell you how to incorporate it into practice. All right. So that's what I would recommend. Uh, and then the other big, big thing is two other discoveries. Um, this one was 16 years in the making, clear. I started going to the high Andes in Peru in 1988. And I finished my real exploratory work there in 2012. Wait a minute. That's 24 years. <laughs> so it took a long time to develop this. And it, it contains flower essences from around the world. Now, again, these are uncut flowers. There's a chapter in here that talks about the various ways that you can make an uncut flower essence. I trademarked the term uncut flower. But there were other people doing that before me. There were people that started that in the 80s. They were dropping water on top of the flower. They were bending the flower over into water. There's a whole bunch of ways of, of making a flower essence without cutting it. I wasn't the first one that thought of that. However. I was given a, a download at night, and I saw a technology, very simple, that would enable the only way in the world to do what I'm doing. There's no other way to do it. There's a way of encasing the flower so that all every cubic millimeter of that flower surface, above, below, and everywhere, 
is in its normal spatial configuration with the planetary realm. It is extracted in that position with no trauma or stress to the flower. There's a reason for doing that. We're looking for quantum physics. We're looking for the transfer of energy in that flower to water in the most bioharmonic way. And there's no other way to do it. And I, I don't ever mean to denigrate anybody else because all of these people that make flower essences are all inspired. They're, uh, they're, they're just a, a wonderful group of people around the world that make flower essences. If their flower essences work very well, it's a result of their spiritual connection with the flowers. It's not a result of their technology. If my flower essences work well, I have a spiritual connection. There's a large amount due to the technology, both. You have to have both. But the, uh, I try to just, it's factual. It's just, a, it's just a statement. If you do this process, it makes the highest amount of energy. And that's just the way it is. But you then have to find the flowers. So this book, those two chapters, explain this crazy life that I, and unfortunately I did this before I got married because you, you couldn't do what I did in married life. It just, we, we, it, it just was, it was crazy. So it just, it was just very stressful to do that and try and travel around the world and maintain my practice and my business and so on. It was very complicated. So life is a little easier now. So let's start the screening with those people. Just come on up and remind me of, of the test phrases. So just one at a time, we're going to do, and you were, you were emotional trauma, or yes. right? Okay, so mm -hmm. we'll go ahead and lie face up. Face up. This is very important. There's a lot of commentary, and I, I can see on the faces of some of the attendees here who are very polite but don't want to say it, they don't approve of muscle testing in this organization. And the reason is they've seen people do this incorrectly, and therefore their little scientific mind comes up and goes, that's bunk. And so, unfortunately, it's not bunk, but there's a lot of ways that a muscle test can be done improperly. And so if that's not done properly, then you, it doesn't mean anything. So that's just the way it is. And if you didn't use an os if you did an auscultate correctly with a stethoscope, your heart sound evaluation would be worthless, wouldn't it? But the stethoscope's okay, but you just didn't know what you were doing. So this is the same way. Keep your elbow straight and pull solid toward me. And you match the amount of strength that I'm putting into you. Don't pull too hard. Okay, if she raised her arm out of her socket, the muscle test would be invalid. If she recruited the rest of her body, if I did it with her standing, all of those things could make that muscle test inappropriate or invalid. So I do this because it's more likely. Say your first name, my name is. My name is Jamie. Okay, and then say, um, my, my name is Geraldo. My name is Geraldo. <laughs> she weakened. Her name is not Geraldo. So what we have done is we've, we've proven, we have a baseline there's a certain group of people that don't answer to their own name. There's one flower that fixes that, and it's called blue water lily. We don't have it here. It, just remember that. That's one of the most it, depersonalization, for those of you that are in psychology, when people become depersonalized, they, they're not connected to who they really are. That's a huge thing. It actually shifts every reality in their life. There's one flower. Turns out it was the most sacred flower in ancient Egypt. It's on every glyph and relief on every sacred temple in Egypt. It's one flower. It's a blue water lily, blue lotus. They used to call it blue lotus, but it's really a water lily. I didn't know that until I went to, to uh, Egypt in 2012. And I started looking at this thing. It was on every site that we went to, and I asked the guide about that. And he said, oh, yeah, yeah, that's, that's blue water lily. It's everywhere. It's the same thing. I thought, that must be interesting. So I prepared of that. Um, uh, I prepared that in 2008, maybe. It changes depersonalization very often. So it's remarkable. But anyway, you're fine with that. OK, so say I'm, um, um, I'm free from the effects of emotional trauma. I'm free from the effects. Well, wait, don't pull before I tell oh, you. OK, right. I'm free from the effects of emotional trauma. I'm free from the effects of emotional trauma. OK, you're, she's recruiting. She's really trying to be strong. <laughs> say I'm free from the effects of emotional abuse. Okay. I'm free from the effects of emotional abuse. Cool. No, that's quite weak. All right. So we would then go to healing support, which we're going to use for all kinds of things. These little test vials are available to practitioners. Sometimes if they use electrodermal screening, they fit in the honeycomb device, so they're very useful for that. I wish, more pe I wish everyone that did electrodermal screening would use these. Now, a lot of people don't know they exist. Under the tongue. 
And I typically, while I'm doing this, and I'm pretty mindful of this, we're going to some very important areas, third eye here, GV20 up here, which is a master control point. And at this point, those people that see things start going, ah, whoa. Oh my goodness. <laughs> it's going on. It's, it's happening, but we don't see it. Those people that don't see, we don't see it. But the people that see it are sitting there making faces at me. <laughs> well, Mike, what's happening? What did you just do? So I'm free from the effects of emotional trauma. I'm free from the effects of emotional trauma. What happened to your muscle strength? It got stronger. It got stronger. I'm free from the effects of emotional abuse. Ooh. I'm free from the effects of emotional abuse. Pull strong. Now I'm pushing really hard. It's solid. The test change, it's a neuromuscular response. It's reading her unconscious and it's reading what happened energetically. If you take that for two or three weeks, it can profoundly change your reality. And what I do in my clinic is I'll tell people to take something for three to four weeks and I'll reevaluate them. So, okay, so let's say you've been working on getting rid of emotional stress and trauma for 10 years. And so this is a good example, because they've already seen 50 people or 20 practitioners. They've already done all kinds of, which has probably helped. But did it fix everything? Not, no. It apparently didn't. OK, so let's go to the next one. So by the way, you, the book has a, a, a very important area in it, three pages written on dosing. And it's called Critical, you know, Essential Recommendations for, for Dosing. Because depending on your sensitivity, you can take as little as one drop on the radial pulse rubbed in your skin. If you're a person that has ecological sensitivity, environmental illness, or extremely uh, very unstable energy bodies, up to people that are spirit warriors and that are hardened. They're hardened spirit warriors. And they're going like, I don't care what my karma is. And I really don't care what it does to my body. I'm going to break every limitation that there is. I actually saw a guy consume a bottle in two days. He drank this stuff. He did this stuff. And I said, what's this doing to you? He said, oh, man, I'm, I'm absolutely miserable. And I'm driving that stuff out. It didn't bother him. Psychically, he was strong enough to do that. I don't recommend that for the average person. Okay, I, You have to be very, very, there's this huge continuum of the amount of this stuff that you can take. As little as this thing, once a day, not even taking it internally, up to you can, you can take a, a drop per ounce sipped 16 or 20 times a day. And that's tolerated by a fair number of people. But you have to be aware that it could cause some surfacing. And you just have to go, cool, and not be disrupted by it. OK, so yours was love, right? The, the no, that was also the, the trauma. Yeah, but, but was, it, was it also failure to receive love? Or not? Who's you? OK, so I'm free from the effects. Uh, let's calibrate you. My name is Robert. My name is Robert. OK, now give me enough resistance here. My Robert. name is Robert. My name is Robert. We don't want to, he's throwing his arm up. We don't yes. want him to do that. Yep, <laughs> keep the arm down, keep the elbow Maybe down. Maybe I should use my name that I use. Your name? Robin. That, Robin. Yeah. Yeah, because this says Robert. Yeah, I know. OK, so my name is Robin. My name is Robin. And then my name is Henrietta. My name is Henrietta. Let's try it again. My name is Henrietta. My name is Henrietta. No, it's not. OK, good. So that's, that's calibrated. It's OK. Now say I'm free from the effects of emotional trauma. I'm free from the effects of emotional trauma. Mm -hmm. Let that relax. So by the way, the people that see energy at some point should comment on what they're seeing. Open your mouth here. Under the tongue, on top of the tongue. I put my fingers here mm -hmm. so that you don't hit the eyes with that. And I don't know why I started doing this. I just started doing this. It, it just seems like, especially the pineal area, the GV20s. No, GV, I'm just putting it on these points. And then sometimes one of my, one of my psychic friends said she was standing when I was working on her husband. She said, oh, you have to put it on the gills. And I said, what? She said, the primordial gills. <laughs> she said, humans have primordial gills. You've got to put it on the gills right here. So, I, so uh, and actually, that's been confirmed by other people that were energetic sensitive. They said, you have to put it here, too. So I started doing that. 
pull strong. So I'm free from the effects of emotional trauma. I'm free from the, from the effects of emotional trauma. Pull solid. Now, his, he, his, his body is under, <laughs> what do you do? <laughs> what do you do? What's, what's your livelihood? Uh, I'm pretty much retired. What did you do? What did you do? Uh, Unless you don't want to share that. And stuff like that. Yeah. Okay, have you done, so have you done good works that were opposed by other people, by other beings? Well, no. Philanthropy. Yeah. Well, support the Waldorf movement in a big way. And, okay. And, uh, well, anybody that's trying to do anything good these days is under to. attack. Put, let's put it that way. And so his nervous system is showing me that it doesn't have, his muscles aren't responding. They're tired. His body is weary. You can tell that by the way his muscle responds. So, you, yeah. There's stuff that yeah. needs to be done to strengthen, but right. you're you're here because I mean you know that right? That's yeah. yeah. So that's not new, but anyway, so that does help you, but there's other things that should be done. But that does have an effect. It's beneficial. Okay. Okay. All right. So do it. Do it oh. again. I'm free from the effects of emotional trauma. I'm free from the effects of emotional trauma. Okay. I'm free from the effects of emotional abuse. I'm free from the effects of emotional abuse. About a 50 or 60 percent improvement there, not totally, but I would definitely do other things. That's not a perfect example, okay. but it's good for you, so that would be a good thing to use. Okay, next. Let's do the next one. Okay. All right, that's the love one, right? Yes. Okay. So the most fun thing I have, probably the most fun thing I have is, this, and I see probably 70 percent women, just because that's what happens in holistic medicine, and, uh, is the, and I do this so often with relationship stuff. So how's your relationships? No, they're not good. Um, can, you want to change a relationship? Yes, I do. Cool. Let's let's create a plan. And generally, within about a year, it all turns around. From horrible, mar you know, bad marriages. I'm a I, I'm a horrible person to break up marriages. <laughs> really. I tell people, I said, now look, you, you know, if if you if you realize that there's problems, you either have to work really hard to make sure you repair that and continue your and improve your relationship, or be prepared, be prepared to, to 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 end it. One way or the other. Because when you start this stuff, it's that powerful. It'll either, it makes short work of this. You either fix it, if it's fixable, or get out of it. I'm not a proponent of staying in a horrible relationship just because it protects the kids. It destroys the kids, really, for any of us that have been part of that. It's just, now, I'm sure there are always exceptions, but it's been amazing over the years to see how many people are truly grateful when they go, oh my gosh. And it, you know, it's not like it happens immediately. Over the next six months, a year, a year and a half, you see a gradual, beautiful, organic movement toward resolution, whether it's either improving the relationship or dissolving the relationship. So if the elements of not receiving love are there, that's a big, huge thing that you have to fix at the beginning of a relationship. Keep your elbow straight, and you're going to pull toward me. Pull solid. OK, no, are you familiar with muscle testing? No. Aha. Okay, you pull toward me, and only when I tell you. Okay, let your, let your arm relax. Now, when someone's not at all familiar with muscle testing, sometimes it takes quite a while to get them familiar with that. Pull solid, and you just match the amount of strength until we lock. Okay, don't raise your arm up. Keep your elbow straight. Pull solid toward me. Nice. Okay, good. So now you're going to say, my name is Sarah. My name is Sarah. Pull solid. And then say, my name is Jose. My name is Jose. No, it's not. Okay, so we're <laughs> calibrated there. Say, I allow myself to receive love. I allow myself to receive love. Pull strong. Wait a minute. I want to make sure that's correct. I allow myself to receive love. I allow myself to receive love. Pull solid. What do, what do you feel there? It's, it's not strong. No. Okay. Okay, ah, open. Could someone give me another healing support, Jim? Could you get me another one? We, we've kind of used that one up.
So for the people at Sensor C Energy, can you give any 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 comments here? When you apply that, it feels like a lot of, like just a, a burst of fresh air inside. It's like a feeling for me more than a a, 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 a visual image, but I feel the image, if that makes sense. You feel her. Yeah, it's like a, a blossoming of like a, a aerosolized and just a, but kind of like a fresh burst, like a fresh air. Ah, okay, good, thank you. Keep your elbow straight. Turn this, and then say, I allow myself to receive love. I allow myself to receive love. Pull solid. Now what happened to that? It's a lot stronger. Yeah, okay, mm -hmm. come on up. Good, so that's healing support. Now, what was the next one? Yes, shit happening. Ah! <laughs> <laughs> Isn't that just part of life? I have, yeah, no. Uh, some people have a little bit more of it happening than they ought to, all right? So let's just see here. <laughs> I always laugh because I, I, when I created this product, I w and I actually had a label design, and then I, it, the marketing says, no, we, we really needed to do something different. But it was, what was the name of it going to be? Do you remember that? Um, Boo Bomb. <laughs> Boo Bomb. And it had a little graphic of this, like, like, like there was this little ghost, like Casper the Ghost, if you were old enough to remember the old cartoons, this ghost was going, and it, there was a little ghost was going off the, the, the thing, and the spray was following him, because, because that's exactly what happens for the people that can see energy when you, sp and I, my book details in chapter eight what I, how I first saw that, where actually I could feel that aren't things flying off. It, 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 it contains a group of, of essences from around the world that just simply gets rid of spooks. That's all I can say. It's very, very, very powerful. It's called clear. This will hopefully be our biggest seller in the future because it applies to everyone. Go into your workspace if you have a toxic workspace and just spray it in your workspace. If you have a house that's got bad things happening, I've had people report that you know all kinds of horrible things in their house just simply went away when they start, started using this. I could use a little myself right now, as a matter of fact. <laughs> And you can do that, you can spray it internally. And it's got like, I don't know how many, 15 or 16 flower essences. We don't normally combine that many, but for this substance, it's useful because it's just massive protection. So, uh, yeah. I don't even know if I tested you. No. Oh, well, it's not there now, sorry. <laughs> That's not very good science, by the way. <laughs> Keep your elbow straight. I'm free from the effects of emotion. I'm free from the, I'm free from the influence of negative thoughts and beings. I'm free from the influence of negative thoughts and beings. Full stop. Yeah, she wasn't, because I can see. I'm yeah, sorry, I can yeah, tell you that. I but I'm, and that. I should have tested that before. I'm sorry. I got involved in talking. But <gasps> okay. if there's anybody else that's had that problem, does anybody else feel like, come on up? Good. Okay. <laughs> All right. Good. So it was for that. It was yes, that. Okay. That. So let's get this out of the way. I am free from the influence of negative thoughts and beings. I am free from the influence of negative thoughts and beings. Pull solid. And we did testing before, and you're familiar with muscle testing, so we did all the calibration. Pull solid. Okay, so um, I am free from dark forces attacking me. I am free from dark forces attacking me. That's a good phrase, too, and you don't want to get too spooky with it, but... Um, She's an energy worker, so anytime we had one of the doctors here who's doing one of the case studies, I really wanted him to get a hold of this because he's really a beautiful human being and he's taking on all the negative stuff of his patients and it's just not good and it'll really, it'll break the practitioner down. So every practitioner needs to have this in their office. It is called clear. So when we did this work with people that can see, they didn't even have to take it orally, we just did this. And that's the boo bomb. <laughs> it's like a cartoon. <laughs> they're, they're out of here. And it's really, really. I see a gremlin. He just took off. The one that you were showing yeah. me. She actually had it before we did this. She, had, she found a picture online of a being that reminded her of what was bothering her. You think he's gone now? Yeah, he's gone. He took off. <laughs> All right, pull strong. I'm free from the influence of negative thoughts and beings. I'm free from the influence of negative thoughts and beings. Yeah, I'm free from the attacks of the dark forces. I'm free from the attacks of the dark forces. Full strong. Yeah. 
So what do you think that would do? We actually have, we have question and answer period. But the last thing that I created, which was in 2015, again with Jim's help, I got this huge download about the causes of depression when I started realizing how many people in the United States are on antidepressants. And all of a sudden, it, 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 it's a huge revelation for me, but it shouldn't be. It's kind of obvious. Do you know what the cause of depression is? It's simple. It's one word. Hopelessness. So the test phrase for this blessed thing is this. Two things. The condition of the world is hopeless. And a high percentage of you will check true. The more we know, the more we know that that's true on some level. And then the second one is, my personal life condition is hopeless. When you change that in a person, then I've told people this, the condition of the planet is absolutely hopeless. I'm happy. The planet is in terrible shape. And unless we receive extraplanetary help, Star, star Wars, Star Trek type, big ship comes down and broadcasts. We're never going to be able to clear the toxicity. So I'm hoping for a miracle. We need it. But it's that bad if you really know what's going on. And yet, are we supposed to be depressed? No. Let's go party. If it goes down in flame, let's be drinking a champagne. You know, really, seriously, there's no reason to be depressed. It doesn't help anyone. To say that it's not serious is simply putting your head in the sand. So that smile, it gets rid of the condition of the world is hopeless. We use this in pediatrics. We use this everywhere. It is huge because it gets rid of the condition of the world is hopeless. And you can test it. It's just so easy to do. So thank you. Great. Thanks, Great. guys. Great. Appreciate it. So what did the, you see the first woman that um, was being helped for trauma. Yeah. As soon as you started spraying, just indigo just started bursting from all around her crown and the upper part of her body. And then the woman who was seeking love, um, green, and then it created a kind of a gold hue around that. It's beautiful. The heart is green. Beautiful green, green. green like emerald. Yeah. It was gorgeous. Yeah. Yeah. So, but I didn't see anything until I saw that. The spray. Uh -huh. This is beautiful. Oh, wonderful. Thank so, you so much. Thank you. Thank you. <laughs> yeah. Stay in touch. My gosh. Watch this stuff work wonders. It's, it's fun.